Hey, this is Bob from Bantam Built, the tiny house company in Chicago. And I've got some really cool cabins I want to show you guys. Unlike our big, normal size tiny house on wheels, we decided to build some really cool off the grid options for both your secluded property, your backyard, um, really anywhere you can place these, they'll pretty much run on their own. Because this one right here, this is our twin size bed, full bathroom cabin that's completely off the grid with four solar panels on the roof. But even cooler than that is our little bunkhouse that sits right next to it, sleeps two people, and with, an, with a cord connected between the two houses, this can also be ran completely off the grid. For those of you that are working from home due to the pandemic, as nice as it is to work from home, not many people want to work with everybody else that's living there too. So we decided to design a very sleek backyard office that you could place pretty much anywhere on your property for merely a shed permit. So the same kind of permit that you would get to get a storage shed brought to your facility, you could place that on your property as well. Some of the really cool features that we're able to compact into these homes are really laid out in this uh, little cabin right here. So I wanna take you inside and show you all the solar and how everything kind of works and really get in to the behind the scenes of what these houses are all about. So let's go inside. So before we go inside, I wanted to go through the solar panels and kind of how they're connected because not a lot of people uh, really get explained or how this works. So uh, we're definitely gonna go inside, so don't go anywhere. And before I go any further, if you could be so kind as to like, comment, and share this video, I'd really appreciate it. And also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button below, turn on those notifications so you know every single time that we upload a new video. All right, let's go through this. So I'm gonna lift these panels away and you're gonna be able to see underneath here all the inner workings. So if you've ever had a flashlight that has batteries in it and they're kind of stacked positive, negative, positive, negative on top of each other, then this will be no different. This is a very simple way to understand this. So think of each of these panels as one battery. You've got a positive side, which is the little bump, and then you've got the flat side, which is the negative. And what we've done here is we've taken these 12 volt panels and we've created 24 volt systems. These two panels are connected positive to negative. And then from there, the other negative goes to this Y connector. And then these two panels are connected positive to negative, and they also go to the same Y connector. And when they go into here, it's what we call paralleled. So you have 24 volts and 24 volts, and these two cables right here then go down into the house. We do that because we can run more wattage through 24 volts and and it requires less amperage than if we were to do everything in 12. And in, re and in theory, instead of having four panels up here, we could actually have eight. So it gives us a lot more flexibility to run 24 volts. Now a lot of people are worried because they have 12 volt systems, how does that power convert? So let's now go inside and I can go through that with you. Underneath this twin size bed frame is where we've put all of the components that make this house um, run so well. In here we have our 10 gallon water heater that runs dual fuel. So it runs off a of propane and it'll run off an electric. So if you ran out of propane, you could always kick it into electric and still have hot water. I figure it's kind of a nice feature. We also have a low voltage water pump that's gonna pump water from this 25 gallon fresh water tank to the shower, the vanity, and the toilet. Also underneath here, we have this 200 watt solar uh, Pearson wave inverter. The, what's cool about this inverter is it will charge the batteries from shore power or 
allow for the solar controller to charge the batteries as well. If you were to run out of power, let's say, the batteries run low, something happens, maybe it's cloudy for a vast number of days and just the solar is not keeping up and you might have a portable generator or maybe you have access to grid power. What you can actually do is you can plug a power cord into the outside of this house and not only will it transfer the power over to illuminate and power the entire house, but it will also charge the batteries at the same time. So let's say you're out in the middle of a very remote location. Um, there's, no, there's no sun for a number of days. You've been using the house a lot. Maybe it's cold outside. Maybe it's been raining and you just find yourself inside a lot and you run out of power. And you have, but if you have a portable generator, you could start the portable generator outside and recharge the system so that at night or you know, whenever you don't want to hear that generator, you can just shut it off and you'd have enough battery power to get you to the next day. Now over here is the solar controller. Now I've, this is kind of confusing for a lot of people, so I want to break this down very simple. I like this controller because it's very intuitive, it's simple to use, and um, it's not that expensive either. I think it's $130. Now the cool thing about this is we have 24 volts coming in from the roof from the solar panels. It's able to sense that, but it also is able to tell that we only have a 12 volt battery source. So it's able to take the power coming from the roof, step it down and convert it to 12 volts because we don't want to run 24 volts worth of charging power to our 12 volt batteries because it'll really harm them and it's just not efficient. So this, this intelligently does all that stuff. Now, you've probably seen it switch between a bunch of different functions and those functions are everything from the battery temperature to the kilowatt usage to the amperage that's being charged with and the voltage of the panels, all that kind of stuff. We want to keep things really simple. So when it comes to the electrical panel, we're running a standard RV panel, but what we've done is we've taken out all of the primitive charging guts, which I'm looking to see. Oh yeah, here they are. Here you can see these. So this, this unit looks like something that belongs like in 1984. It's incredibly inefficient, it gets super hot. And what this is basically is your charging unit or power supply for typically your 12 volt sources in an RV. This comes with the panel and it actually, it fits right up in here, just like that. We take this out because we don't need it. And instead we take our leads from our battery and we run them right back into the circuit board keeps everything in one place. You've got your low voltage circuits on this side. You've got your high voltage circuits on this side. All these breakers are off right now. We've got one, we've got one fuse in here that's a 7.5 and that's running all of our lights interior and exterior right now as we finish the unit. What we've done with the flooring in this unit is we've taken the foam and put it we put two inch foam on top of our sheathing and then we put sheathing on top of that. We want to create as much thermal break as possible so we get really good insulation in the floor. And then we've elevated the bathroom floor five inches off the ground so we can run all the plumbing inside the unit. We understand that a lot of people are going to use these units during the springtime, summertime and fall, but we have a handful of customers that would like to use these all year round so we want to make sure that nothing's going to freeze on them and the reliability stays at a real high level for them. I think I've covered pretty much everything. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we're going to try to do more of these. So hopefully you stick around and um, you know, we try to teach something every time we do a video. So I, I hope you learned something. Once again, uh, please comment any, any questions you have, leave them below likes, you know, are always appreciated and, uh, you know, share this with somebody that maybe has some questions about solar or wanted something you found explained a little simpler. You know, we, we'd appreciate that too. And also su subscribe if you haven't already, um, and hit the notifications button. So you always know when we do a new video. 
It's really hot in here, so I'm gonna get out of here. Have a good day.